MDI has a legacy of uh, um, moving into executive training and executive education, right? So NMP or um, PGDM BM, as we say, is the first program that ever started here at MDI campus since 87. 1987, this program has been running. So this program definitely has a beautiful legacy to itself. And uh, we are just now teaching the 35th batch of uh, this course, PGD and BM. The new admissions will be of 36th batch, right? So we have beautiful legacy of alums from this program who are MDs, CEOs um, and in uh, senior leadership position in India and abroad, both, right? So this, this program uh, definitely is the oldest program at MDI. And uh, um, earlier, we used to have a lot of company associations, collaborations with us where a lot of different companies used to send across uh, a variety of uh, their own participants from a variety of functions, domains, right? Uh, so we used to have a mix of sponsored and uh, self-sponsored can candidates, right? That has been the uh, legacy. Um, we've had uh, some time uh, in the mid, we have this program as one year program. And now again, we are back to 18 months long residential program at MDI, where 15 months they spend on the campus doing their classes and three months the, towards the end, they go back to their own companies, wherever they are positioned or wherever they are placed while their um, program here at MDI, they go back into those companies for three months, they do those projects, come back and present here in one week's time. And with that, their course gets completed. Yeah. Now, this program also gives students uh, a benefit of one location. Yeah. So we are located right in the heart of the country. And with that, uh, uh, students get to experience a beautiful uh, flavor of uh, basket of industry experts from all functionalities, from all industries, from all sectors and from all levels. Yes. So every week there are a lot of industry expert sessions that are lined up as a part of a variety of courses that the uh, participants are studying. And other than that, we have a lot of student seminars, student activities where, again, these students get to interact one-on-one -on -one with a variety of industry experts, coaches, guides, um, mentors, right? And with that, they also are able to gain uh, live projects and maybe working directly with these industry experts to gain more of experience into other sectors and other industries where they have not yet yeah, been exposed to. So that is the beauty of this program. We want uh, all these participants to be at the same level, isn't it? Um, and for that purpose, we want them to clear at least a minimum criteria. Um, we are looking at at least 50% in their 10th, 12th and graduation. Yeah, that is one of the eligibility criteria. The other uh, criteria is that they should have worked uh, in the industry for at least five years post their graduation. Post their graduation, five years experience we are looking at minimum. Right now, there is no maximum experience. They can uh, be um, coming in with 10 years, 12 years, 15 years of experience. Absolutely okay. Should not be a problem here. Yeah. Um, we are also looking at them clearing at least one of these tests, uh, CAT, ZAT, GMAT. CAT, ZAT, GMAT. So CAT and ZAT um, uh, are already over now, but GMAT still remains. And we're looking at at least 550 um, as a score in GMAT. Yeah. So with that, um, um, they, they stand a tall 
at all chance to be shortlisted. Once they are shortlisted, uh, basis their profile, they will be called in for an interview round where uh, at least two or three faculty and one alum would be speaking with them. It's not um, uh, an interview, it's more of uh, a conversation to understand the candidates better. So these days we talk so much about the fitment, isn't it? Um, they are looking at a fitment area and and at the same time, MDI is also looking at a fitment area. And uh, with that, once they are selected through the interview, um, they are made an offer. So they are given an offer to come and attend uh, the course, um, uh, get admission in the course. Um, and basis their acceptance on the offer, we move ahead. So this is this is the entire admission uh, process that uh, they would be looking at clearing. So I'll I'll take a bit of it, and uh, if uh, something still remains, I'll re request my colleagues to fill in. This experience that we are talking about can be from a variety of domains. Can, they can be self-employed as well um, in their family business um, like that. They may be director in their family business. They may be um, a salaried in their family business. So it is absolutely okay. Wherever they are working or wherever they work, they should have completed five uh, years uh, in full-time employment, in full-time employment. That's what we are looking at, right? Um, and because of that, we would also want to look at their documents related with their employment, right? So they can furnish uh, three months uh, slip, salary slip uh, to us. Uh, that should suffice if they were um, founders, co-founders, um, uh, or maybe directors into their own company. Again, documents from their ITR, um, reports from there, that, that should definitely suffice. But yes, we are not looking at part-time, we're looking at full-time employment for five years. And uh, we would like to have evidences towards it. Once they produce the evidences, it's absolutely okay. Uh, they will be able to uh, meet all the requirements. See, first of all, the program is uh, unique in the way it is delivered. So uh, it has 15 months of uh, classroom teaching where like, they are there in the campus and three months of in-company dissertation. So it's a mix of uh, classroom plus uh, practice-oriented experience. And besides that, in 15 months also, we uh, provide them a lot of inputs for them uh, which are practical in nature because they are all uh, they all have worked in organizations. So the way we treat a regular PGPM class is not the way we treat the PGDM BM students because they are already experienced and they are like uh, functional experts in their own domains. So some unique features of uh, this program which will set it apart from other B schools, I would say, is let's be very practical. Number one a very high return on investment. So by paying uh, around okay 16.40 uh, lakhs, you get an experience uh, which the comparable B schools provide you at a much higher price. So this is, this is number one. Because see, this is a very rational decision for any executive to leave the job and join this program. So it has to be a well thought after decision uh, that uh, I should go for this kind of program. Then what do we make sure to uh, provide them the right kind of experiences? Uh, every course has got uh, four sessions out of 20 sessions. That is 20%, which uh, is uh, delivered by a practitioner. So we invite guest lectures and uh, they are people who are working in the industry in that domain uh, on which the subject is being taught and they deliver sessions four sessions out of 20 uh, for each course. Then we have national and immersion, national and international immersion program where they are exposed for 14 days for around two weeks, where we expose them in national immersion program, uh, various industries in India and to like understand that how the money is really created in the economy and uh, how industries basically work from the grassroots level. 
because India is already a very complex country. So a lot of learning scope is there. So we try to make sure that they're exposed to two, three uh, corners of the country uh, to get this awareness. In the international immersion program, we take them to a uh, European or uh, say in some other region, a top B school in the world where they also undergo a formal course for a uh, few days, let's say uh, anywhere ranging from three days to a week, plus industry visits to expose them that how industries in different countries, uh, developed countries typically work. Or sometimes they go to the origin of the company itself, like where the global headquarters are there. They see those things, they uh, interact with the people of those countries and to get a fair idea about how uh, businesses are done or uh, what is the consumer behavior of people in those countries. And a certification is also provided at the end of this international immersion. Then as per AICT's initiative, we have introduced certain new things like universal human values. So we strongly believe that our students should not only be uh, successful managers or successful leaders, but they should also be responsible leaders. So they should always be mindful of that whatever actions or decisions they are taking, how they are going to affect themselves, their families, uh, their society, the company, and nature at large. So in order to give this kind of uh, assimilation, I would say we introduce a course on universal human values, which is a mandatory course in this program, just to make them responsible leaders for tomorrow. Then we have simulation and integrated simulation. So in the five terms, whatever they have gone through, they assimilate, they like, you know, integrate everything and they go through a simulation, which is often live and they are competing with the top B schools of the world based on the decisions. So whatever decision they took, they'll get the repercussions in the next round. What happened due to that decision in a simulation based environment and it is uh, being competed against the best B schools of the world on the same platform. So that's again uh, another unique thing. Besides that, we offer dual specialization. So they can offer, uh, like they can opt for a major and a minor. So I would say these are some of the unique features of a PGDM BM program, which sets it apart from other uh, competing programs. Okay, so in the course, they have to go through 21 core courses and 11 electives. So 21 core courses are spread all the way up to term 5 and uh, 11 electives have to be taken in the last 3 terms. They are spread across last 3 terms. So a student has to select or opt for 4 courses for a major and three courses for minor out of 11 electives. So we, we recommend that whatever was their domain expertise, so typically they should try to fill in the gaps of competencies because see, they are an expert in one particular domain. Now, if they build upon that domain itself, then uh, nothing much is going to happen because they know that at the back of their hand. So besides their own interest area, they should build up those competencies which are uh, lacking in them, which are new for them and which will enable uh, them build a better career uh, in future. So this is our advice for uh, core and elect, not core, but at least electives. So this is a common problem. I would not term it as mid mid career crisis, <laughs> but still many of us become unhappy after working uh, in the initial jobs, uh, which we get after let's say our engineering. So uh, we uh, 
don't boast of anything as such and we try to keep them grounded and we advise them to be realistic in their expectations. So first of all, uh, this is the point. Then suppose they want to change their stream, change their line or a typical scenario of shift from a back office to a front office. So they need to work very hard to inculcate those skills to enable them make the shift. So we say that the shift is possible provided you put in the right efforts from day one. So see, they all will be privileged to join a top school of the country with uh, relatively less effort as compared to uh, if they could have done uh, an MBA right after engineering or like that scenario. So that entry is different, but here it is, I would say it is still relatively easy and it's another chance to boost your career, probably the final chance. So if somebody is uh, interested in changing their stream, they need to work on their toes from day one, enter into live projects, do those things. Suppose, see, I have a background in marketing. I want to shift to operations. Then no company will take me in operations. Because see, after five, six months uh, or even earlier, the placements will start in the program itself. So in five, six months, nobody will like uh, enable you to change your stream as such. But at least if you have a zeal and you're working towards it, you can accelerate that process of shift in career or shift in uh, the line or domain. Provided a few things are met, like as I said, you they need to prepare in that line of interest by way of live projects that is practical exposure in that area, uh, going through courses which are relevant in that domain, and maybe an attitudinal shift towards that domain. Mm -hmm. So with these efforts, continued efforts, it is possible. Otherwise, like uh, whatever stream they belong to, whatever domain they belong to, or typically their career advances in that domain. I think... Uh... The, to add to that is, is like they may have to restart again because this five years if they are yes. actually redoing the entire change or a shift then it means that they have to restart again this is again to be thought of in fact i advise them to become fit again also <laughs> so, <laughs> some, sometimes they become misfit so see when they are sitting for placements once again in their life they are treated as a fresh candidate so all the old legacies or all the things of the past, they need to shed off and then start afresh. So that's a major turning point in their career. Yeah, in fact, uh, over here, I would also like to add on, we have a very diverse, you know, uh, set of the people coming and being a part of the class group. Uh, we have uh, people from their own, uh, like, you know, family businesses. And we have, you know, students from, like, you know, uh, who have uh, been a part of Merchant Navy, Navy or Army. And they have actually joined this course and have made a complete career shift. And now they're working successfully in the corporate setup of their choice, in fact. Uh, we have a lot of examples where we can see our alumni. If you see our alumni, you'll realize most of them coming from technical side uh, took the skills, you know, took, took up this course and they were well placed in all the good managerial positions. So it's like even if you come from a diverse area and you are very focused about how to go about, as Professor Shiv just mentioned, uh, what strategies you can go up, uh, go ahead with. We are all there to help and support uh, the student and uh, they will surely make a good mark in entry into the diverse field where they are now wanting to pitch for themselves and to add uh, to what my dear colleagues have already mentioned we also conduct career counseling uh, sessions for these students during their program here so we do a lot of um, one to one session helping them uh, make their customized resume for the transition transformation or acceleration in their career that they are looking at we also look at uh, their career ladders, career path, help them define the same with the help of industry experts and experts who are known for uh, coaching participants in this particular area. 
Right. Uh, so there are workshop uh, workshops that are conducted uh, for these students, these participants to help them um, design uh, their own career now onwards after um, uh, graduating from this course. Right. So that is a very unique and very special aspect of this program. A lot of assistance, a lot of support is provided to the students so that their persona can uh, also exuberate out uh, in terms of offline and online branding, which is these days uh, very, very critical uh, for anyone who's looking for a good job, a good opening, a good um, uh, profile um, and, and a huge transition. So this way, we uh, empower our students wherever possible. We offer them dual specialization, which, uh, uh, which is as per their interest area. So suppose, as I told earlier also, if they are able to uh, like uh, build up the inputs required to change their domain, they can... Uh, take that as a major specialization and they are hopeful also that they'll get a job in that area. So as again, I told earlier that they need to build up or live up to the expectations of the prospective companies uh, if they are doing so. So this is major and then uh, they can also choose minor specialization. Uh, so what we have seen over the past few years is some some students are like inclined towards taking a major in their core uh, domain itself and minor in some allied area. Some more enterprising students would like to take a major in an absolutely different domain itself, which is still okay, provided they uh, put in a lot of efforts in that area. So this is how major and minor is there and then uh, all of us are available to guide them uh, as to what uh, area to take or which courses to take in that domain to build up their major and minor. Sometimes maybe specializations can be sort value addition to whatever they have. So the specializations are like in uh, marketing, finance, HR, IT, strategy. You see, so the answer is very simple. If uh, I tell somebody about a B-school operating somewhere in Italy, how will we assess the quality of education or uh, quality of the course itself? So in order to bring all the B-schools at par uh, in terms of comparable quality, these accreditations are there, which are famous all over the world. So these include like uh, uh, AACSB, from US, then Association of MBA Schools, AMBA, UK, then similarly SAQS, so, uh, or Equus. So these are the certifications. So the more certifications a B school has got, uh, it, is, uh, it is assumed that the B schools are at par in terms of the processes, the delivery, the quality, the quality means it's not only it's not a process certification as such like ISO certification, but it is also an indicator of quality. Now, if uh, I see that there's X Y Z B school in somewhere uh, in the world, and it has these accreditations, so I can easily uh, uh, rest assured that it has comparable quality with let's say my B school. So once we see the accredited uh, B schools students or the degrees, at times it is even wanted that uh, as a qualification itself by companies that you should be an MBA or a PhD or uh, you have done you should have done your course from an accredited B school because otherwise how do we assess that what education you have gone through what quality of education you have gone through. So this creates a level playing field across various B schools in the world. And uh, uh, the idea is to make the students uh, education versus 
career exchange uh, more seamless across countries and across campuses or B schools in the world. When it comes to uh, placements for uh, the executive pro uh, programs, particularly the PGDM BM program, so uh, this career management uh, has been uh, one of the main things why students join uh, the PGDM program, Austral NMP program at MDI, and uh, before even going to those statistics, I think we need to understand the composition of the whole uh, program. Uh, uh, that this program has people who have sponsored their MBAs themselves, which are called as self-sponsored uh, candidates. And we have people who are coming in, uh, being sponsored by their respective company and who are not looking for, uh, let's say, placement necessarily. So both of them study together. Now coming to the placements of the people who've paid the fees themselves or are self-sponsored. Now, therein, the uh, statistics this time have been that the average uh, placement package has been, uh, and when I say this time, I mean the PGDM BM batch of 21-23, right? So the average placement package has been 24.46 lakhs CTC. The highest package has been 43.92 and the median package has been 22 lakhs. Now, this is the statistics, which is the quantitative part of things. Now, if you look at, if you're digging a little deeper into the same. So uh, the companies such as Geo Platforms, uh, TCS, particularly Analytics Profiles, uh, Infosys, Infosys Consulting, and both uh, of them are different companies, uh, Trident Group, uh, Cognizant, Accenture Technology, uh, Accenture High Technology, Auth Bridge. Now these have been the companies which have recruited, right? The list is not exhaustive. But there are more companies. These are major ones. And the kind of profiles that they've offered are very interesting, which is basically product manager, uh, principal in a business consulting, which is like the, the almost the senior leadership position for a business consulting firm or a technology consulting firm, uh, functional lead, uh, and then consultants, senior consultants, uh, associate managers and managers. So that's that, that's how it has been. And uh, uh, the, the support which we provide uh, and uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, right from uh, CV preparation to uh, scouting companies to formation of a dedicated placement council for the PGDM BM uh, students. And often on in case they require a data or they require some other knowledge resource to be subscribed to. So that's 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 there and that comes in handy. Right. And I think most of our faculty, as let's say uh, my other colleagues were also mentioning, they are uh, extremely uh, helpful and they can be reached out uh, in terms of uh, career support as well. And just to re reiterate what was being said, the executive placements have this unique, let's say, uh, perspective towards it that the students are not only looking for an augmentation of their placement package, but they're also looking for a career change or transformation. So let's say I've been a functional person for seven years, right, post my graduate graduation or post-graduation. Now I want to shift to a managerial role or maybe I need to shift to a specific discipline, let's say finance or operations or strategy or IT, right? So this kind of program, which is PGD and BM, gives us a platform to actually go ahead and do that shift, right? So you are actually pivoting also and you're also uh, escalating and ascending your career as well, right? So, so that, that's about it.